Okay, so check, check, check it out. This is uh, the top cover for my uh, Red Max GZ5000, which is the same thing as the Yonsa Red um, 2252. Um, almost the same thing as the Yonsa Red 2253. And pretty much the same thing as the Husqvarna 545 Mark I. Um, anyways, these saws were advertised as having, uh, as Husky calls it, air injection, as Yonsa Red called it, turbo, okay? I don't know that Red Max called it anything, but I cut these slots right here, mainly in, in an effort to get rid of heat, but I'm wondering if perhaps I did a disservice to the saw because I have I recently watched a video by Tree Monkey, and he claimed that uh, the air injection actually Johns Red was able to prove that it created two pounds of boost. So what I did was I I took some epoxy uh, clear epoxy filler. Let me show you. You get this at hobby and craft stores. All right, it's a two part setup to pour and create basically plastic molds. Um, I roughed up uh, my surface really well so that it would stick really, really well. And I put tape on there and then I poured the epoxy in. So now we have completely sealed that back up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and adapt something in here so that I can put a gauge on there and measure to see if it creates any boost at all. Um, like I said, the, the claims were that um, Yonsered was able to prove that they produced two pounds of boost. If that's the case, then cutting this away so that you would um, uh, have freer airflow would actually work against you. So what I'm aiming to measure here is whether or not having this all sealed up if the Husqvarna air injection uh, system or the Johnson Red turbo system actually does, in fact, produce any real boost. If it produces anything at all, even if it's just a half a pound, then you'd be better off uh, leaving it sealed up. And so that's what we're going to search for in this video. So I'm going to get to it and see if I can uh, adapt something so that I can put a gauge on there and measure any pressure. Okay, honestly, it's several days later, but look at that. We got a boost gauge on the side of our top cover. And just to show you guys that it does work before I put it on there, all right? Yes, that's me sucking and blowing. So anyways... <laughs> All right, now let's take this off of here. You can see how I have it. It's just in there, you know. Getting it on is a little tricky, but not much. It's no problem. There we go. Ta-da! So we'll be able to see if we produce boost. So now I will go ahead and point out, first off, I don't think it's going to produce any boost. If it produces any at all, then it's beneficial to not open, uh, open up your top cover for air ventilation or more airflow, right? But like this right here, I don't know. Yeah, see that? There's an air gap right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it and see if it produces any boost whatsoever. Then I will go back and I will cover this up with tape to see if maybe that produces more boost or any boost at all. But here's here comes the testing. Okay, guys, so here we are. I got it all set up where I haven't 
even started it yet. I did go ahead. This is my race saw. Eh, not really. But anyways, um, uh, it does run really good. I did swap out some things with it. I'll tell you about it in another video. But we've got an 18-inch bar on here and a steel RS chain that's been sharpened by me, which is probably mediocre. I don't know. I, I haven't used it forever. It might not cut worth shit. But anyways, we're about ready to fire it up and see if we actually produce any boost whatsoever. That's what the gauge did. We are currently, at this moment, running 10 pounds of boost, which is impossible. Ah, shit. Come on, really? The very first time I fire it up, the gauge doesn't work? That's bullshit. It was producing boost <laughs> I don't know what happened maybe it got a wood chip in there and it clogged it maybe it just sucks doesn't look like the needle should be stuck on anything <laughs> the testing sucks because the gauge went bad on me but let's at least we we could see that it was actually producing a, an amount of boost what oh my god so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to tape up over the primer bulb and see if it produces more boost. But for some reason, it keeps on holding where it left off at. So let's just do a couple cuts just because, and then go back in and open it up and see if we can't get that gauge to act right. Now the gauge is completely pegged. <laughs> ah, that sucks.
Well, with, regardless of how that gauge is acting, what seems to be extremely apparent to me is yes, it is producing an amount of boost, so, which means that everyone that is cutting holes and putting a larger filter and stuff like that on your five series Husqvarna's and possibly the three ser series as well, possibly the ones that say air injection. Do any of them? I know the old stuff did. But yeah, I, I, it seems to be producing boost. Otherwise that gauge would have just stayed neutral. Wow, well the next step of the process is to either A, fix this gauge, which I probably won't be able to do, or B, get a better, higher quality boost gauge and put a screen over it so that in case chips are actually being shoved in there and causing it to uh, work erratically, we could avoid that. But yeah, it seems like it's actually producing boost, which is ridiculously awesome. Another thing to take away from this, this is the first time that I've ran this saw with, well, is it, it's not the first time I've ran it with a seven pin. It's not, I don't think it is. Man, it's running great. It's, man, I mean, I'm into the wood and it's cutting and it's still bouncing off the rev limiter. I've got to actually push on it and to get it off of the rev limiter. So, wow, it's running great. Let's get another cut. I'm going to try and let it self-feed this time and we'll see how long it stays on the limiter. Husky 5 series. That's enough cutting for now. I'm going to take this uh, gauge off and, and see if I can, I don't know, come up with something. I don't know. It literally vibrated loose in there. By doing this, I'm definitely not going to be able to take it back to AutoZone. Or no, Advanced Auto Parts. That's where I got it. Yeah, it just literally came loose completely. The bellows in there came off. I think that's what you call it, bellows. 
So this is trash. This is just trash. But the way that it was jumping around like that, to me, definitely indicates that there's some pressure. And at first, before it went all wonky, we were, we were going between uh, zero and seven PSI. We were going like that. Um, by the time I came over to the camera, it got stuck right there at 10. So, is this worth? Go ahead, might as well just destroy it completely. Get in there and have a look-see. Uh, is this worth actually um, getting a decent gauge? I think it might be. There we go. I think it might be. Because that's, I don't know what you guys are thinking, but to me, my God, that's exciting to know that, wow, it's actually creating boost? There we go. All right, I see it. All right, let me show you. That end down there on the bottom is soldered to that tube and it busted loose. Immediately. Just immediately busted loose. So, I guess the thing to ask yourself and look at here, did we get accurate results? No, we did not. But did we get possibly irrefutable results? No, it's not irrefutable. No, it's not. We have to get a different gauge. 